Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me on a another. Uh, I always try to think of a great adjective to describe today's lesson. So, thank you for joining me for a another elucidating. How about that one? Uh, elucidating. That's uh, when you elucidate something, you explain it, and so hopefully I can live up to that expectation. So. Thank you for joining me for OLC 40 Term 2B, brought to you by Wassa Distance Education Center. Uh, I am your instructor, Mike Laverty. Thanks to be on the airwaves with you today. Today's date is Thursday, March the 4th. That is uh, Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. It's also my, uh, my son's birthday. Uh, my other son's birthday was yesterday, so it's a pretty uh, happy time for, for our family. So hopefully everything's uh, going well with you and you're able to get outside and feel the sun. Uh, yes, so we are on class 12 of unit 1, and, and we're covering unit 1. Today we're going to cover several assignments, So, because I'm hoping to keep things rolling along. So we're going to cover assignments 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18 today, so it's a lot to cover, but some of these are shorter assignments and they don't require as much explanation as the other ones because we've already covered some key concepts, but still, nonetheless, it's still uh, quite a bit to cover, so let's roll ahead with it. So just quickly some key notes here, some key uh, dates. We are on week three of Term 2B, and if you're a potential grad, you need to have all your work submitted uh, by June 9th. And that does include your, um, you know, including including your final exam, okay? So that that date is coming up. It's almost almost a month away. For everybody else, you've got a deadline of June 16th for submitting all your work in this course, including having your final exam uh, written. And if you can't make those deadlines work, then what you can do is you can register for our summer term and then you'll be submitting work over the summer and that means that your credit will be granted next school year or in the case of a, of a potential grad you would have to delay your graduation until next school year so if you want to graduate this year if you want to get a credit right now then please keep those deadlines in mind so we are wrapping up our discussion of unit one today and we will move on to Unit 2 next week. So Weeks 4 and Weeks 5, we will cover Unit 2 of this course. Thanks for tuning in at uh, 91.9 FM in Sioux Lookout or on Bell Express View Channel 972 or one of our uh, stations up in the northern communities. Please note you can always phone me at toll-free at 1-800-465-7144 or locally at... 107 1807737 and you can join us on the Zoom app. So if you go to zoom.us on a computer or open up the Zoom app on your phone, my meeting ID is 417-6699799. Check me out on YouTube. Look for Laverty Wassa in the search bar and then go to my playlist find OLC 40 and you will find what you're looking for there. I did teach this course in term 1B so if you're looking for a previous assignment then you can find it on there. So if you're moving ahead in the course or for whatever reason you need to um, uh, jump ahead uh, every assignments from unit 1, 2, 3, and 4 are covered in those choruses. But of course I'm on the airwaves live with you now for, for term 2B. You can reach me through email, mlaverty at nnecschools.org. That's M-L-A-V-E-R-T-Y at nnecschools.org. Or find me on Facebook, Laverty Wassa, L-A-V-E-R-T-Y-W-A-H-S-A, -E Laverty Wassa. Phone the Wassa building at 1-807-737-1488 or toll free at one 800 Six six seven three seven zero three, and speak to one of our staff members. So, we are here and ready to help you, especially if you've got questions about your educational path, your journey towards graduation. If you got any questions there, 
about the upcoming deadlines that I mentioned at the start of today's class, so reach out to us. So very important um, early on in the process, you know, we are on week three, so it's very important that you reach out to your teacher by email, by phone, by messenger. So get in touch with me, let me know where you're at if you need any help, that's very important to do that right now. And I'm hoping that you've read the study guide, you've read unit one, and You've had a chance to read at least the first couple of chapters of Jimmy Comes Home, and ideally, you've had a chance to read the first three. All right, that brings us to today's lesson. So, so for today's lesson, we'll look at a, our words of the day. Uh, our punctuation mark will be quotation marks. And we'll look at assignments 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. From uh, Unit 1 of OLC 4.0. I think I made a mistake here. I think these are uh, lesson four, and the last two are from lesson five. So there's five lessons in five lessons in unit one. We've covered the first three, and then we'll cover the last two today. So your learning goals are to learn how to use single and double quotation marks and take notes as we review assignments 14 through 18, and to complete assignments 14 through 18 after listening to today's class. This is your success criteria, so you'll be successful if you complete those assignments after listening to, to today's class. And to use your notes, uh, practice the writing process, and continue your progress in this course. So that's what I'm hoping you can do. So you can take notes as we go through the assignments. You're going to be practicing that writing process, that process of, of jotting things down, generating ideas, selecting your best ideas, and then expanding upon them and making connections between them, all that great stuff. And then continue your progress in this course. I know it's hard sometimes. Um, I'm taking a course myself right now, and it's, it's, it can be difficult to balance work and life and family and all these amazing things we want to do and all the, you know, the problems that get in our way. I know what it's like. It's not easy, but you just got to keep moving forward and ask for help when you need it. All right, so uh, that brings us to our words of the day. So we've got a, an amazing illustration by one of my favorite artists. This is Alex Gray. He's, uh, most people know him through um, his work with the band Tool. Um, so this is uh, some of the artwork of Alex Gray. He created this piece called Bond in 2004. And he said this about it. I'm so grateful to have known amazing, inspiring musicians throughout my life. Music seems to make hidden realms of the soul perceptible and bonds people in a transcendent shared space. This is a painting of my friend Bond Berglund, a visionary guitarist. Bond was part of the San Francisco punk band Factrix. Life is a wave of creative consciousness rippling through space and time that we have the honor of aesthetically witnessing. So aesthetics is the arts, right? So we, we witness it through the arts sometimes. Sometimes we just witness it just by being in nature and, and being part of creation. And sometimes we witness it um, by, by people performing and singing and, and creating art aesthetically. Which brings me to my Anishinaabe Moan word of the day. Nanande wi'i nagamo. I hope I pr pronounced that one right. That's a verb, which is he or she sings a healing song. In English, we've got a related word, um, not quite a synonym, but definitely a connected word, catharsis. This is the purging of the emotions or relieving of emotional tensions, especially through certain kinds of art, as tragedy or music. So catharsis, if something is cathartic, it, it, it's like a release. It's an emotional release, and it's done through, through art, through painting, through, through creating something, or by watching um, or witnessing or taking in art made by other people. So in the Anishinaabe Moan language, we have a word called um, nanandewi, which is a verb which means to heal, or it also means a doctor. And then na nagamon, which is a uh, song. And when you combine those two together, you get a healing song. So um, the Anishinaabe Moan language, again, I'm not an expert. I don't speak the language, but I'm very fascinated by it, especially living in a community like Sulakaut. And I, I think it's beautiful how the language is so organic and it combines words. Um, English does this too, like English has compound words and words are, com are 
compounded and mixed to make longer words, but it's nowhere near what you see in um, indigenous languages of you know this part of the world where y you can have words that um, extend for um, you know beyond you know like several parts. Just give me one moment, please. I have to take a very important phone call. Okay, so some English words um, that are related are panacea, which is a solution or remedy for all difficulties or diseases. So from the Greek pan, which is all, and akos, which is remedy. So an all remedy, it remedies all. Melody is a sequence of single notes that is musically satisfying, a tune from the Greek melos for song. Um, alleviate is to make suffering less severe from Latin alleviat, lightened. So y when you lighten someone's load, when you make their suffering less, right, you, you lighten their load. Um, so just some related concepts. So, all right, so wanted to talk about um, how we use quotation marks. So there's double and there's single quotation marks. So double quotation marks are used to show words that come from somebody else, not you, right? They are used when we quote from books, movies, um, other sources. We also use double quotation marks when discussing a part of a bigger work, such as a chapter, an episode of a TV show, a song, a magazine article. And italics are usually used for longer works, like the title of a novel or the title of a TV show. So my favorite episode of Seinfeld, and the show Seinfeld is in italics, so my favorite episode of Seinfeld is, quote, the Merv Griffin show. So I put the title of the show in punctuation marks. Um, we, when, we use in, when we use direct quotations, so the last sentence of chapter one, coming home in Jimmy Comes Home, describes Jimmy's thoughts as he hugs his snowmobile. Quote, he knew that in a couple of months he'd be headed out across the snow. So again, we've got Jimmy Comes Home is written in italics. The first chapter, chapter one, coming home, is double quotation marks and the quote that this is what Jimmy this is like a, a direct quote from the novel he knew that in a couple of months he'd be back on the snow so we capitalize the first letter in the quote when we quote a full sentence we put a double quotation mark at the start of the quote and at the end of the quote and we put the appropriate punctuation mark before the last double quotation mark so so the double quotation mark is the is last right and the, the punctuation mark comes first, in this case, a period. Um, when we use a full quotation, so in this case, the waitress cleared a few more orders, then came to over to our table and said, you need to leave in 10 minutes because we close soon. And then um, when we use part of a quotation, we can do it this way. The waitress told the customers they needed to leave in 10 minutes because the restaurant was closing soon. So you can set up a quotation and you can say, this person said this, and then you just put what they said, or you can incorporate it into your sentence. So it becomes part of your sentence, but it still uses quotation marks. So I know that you wrote the first part, but everything in quotation marks uh, came from somebody else. Now, we use single quotation marks when we use a quote from a text that is already in quotation marks. So Jimmy asked Martha, where did you get the moose from? So we, we, we have double. The double quotation marks tell me it's, it's, it's a quote. And then the single quotation tells me, um, you, know, you know, so if, if you read Jimmy Comes Home, you're going to see quotation marks. So instead of doubling up the quotation marks, you, you use the double to show you're quoting something, and then you use the single to show you're quoting something. I know it gets really confusing, but that, that's the way it works. So when you quote um, something that's already got a, it's already has a, it already has a um, double quotation mark, you, you, that's what, why we use the single quotation mark. And so just a quick note here so we can so we can incorporate the text into our own. So in chapter one, we learn that Jimmy re recently committed three break-ins and also has, quote, several assault and drinking offenses. 
Jimmy is tempted to return to his old ways by visiting, quote, an abandoned trapper's cabin three miles from the community, right? So in those cases, I have incorporated the quote into my own, and then I put the appropriate page number, which is very important. So when you quote a novel, it's important to put the page number to let the reader know where you got it from. Or we can set it up as a, as a separate quote. So in chapter one, we learn that in addition to breaking into the band office, Jimmy has a criminal record. Several assault and drinking offenses, right? So I set the quote up with my friend, the, the colon. Or when Jimmy returns to his community, a group of children ask him a difficult question. Quote, are you going to stay here or go away again, Jimmy? So in this case, it's a quote from the book. It's something the kids actually said. So I start with the double quotation mark. I follow with the single. I put what the kids asked him. Then I put the single and then end with the double. So it's sort of like brackets within brackets, right? They always come in pairs, and, you know, one opens with the other. All right, so for assignment 14, you are asked to go to a YouTube video, and um, so you don't have to watch the YouTube video or listen to the song. It's You can just simply read the lyrics as they're printed in your handout, so that's that's totally fine. You you can you can do it that way if, if you want. Like you you don't have to you, you don't have to read or, or listen to the YouTube video, but if you want to, it's the video is sit down and write dot avi. So if you if you if you search for sit down and write, you may not find it. But if you search for sit down and write and put the dot avi at the end, you should find it right away. Um, also or, or also go to that very go to that very direct link. Um, you know, youtube.com slash watch question mark video, you know, all just, you know, it's a bunch of confusing letters and numbers, but that's the actual link. Or you can search for Speedel 55 or S P E I D E L 55. If you search for that YouTube channel, you should find Sit Down and Write. And after you've had a chance to either listen to the song and or, you know, you listen to the song and read the lyrics or just simply read the lyrics, you should be able to answer these questions. So who do you think is the intended audience for this piece of writing? Why do you think so, right? So So I want you to be specific, okay? So that, that's always my advice to writers in this class. Be be specific. Right? Um who is this meant for? Right, um, the intended audience. Right, so the audience could simply be anybody who presses play and listens to it. But who is the intended audience? Who is this meant for? So be specific as possible. Okay, so focus your answer. So give me an age range, a, a, t a particular kind of person. Right, who who is it meant for? You know, you know who, or maybe you could also you could think of like who would who would benefit. from this, right? What purpose does it serve, right? Question 2A, list three of the careers, types of work mentioned in the song where writing is an essential skill. So, so keyword there, in the song. So some students just list song. Some students have listed occupations where writing is essential. So don't do that. Um, make sure it's in the song, right? So find you're going to find three jobs in the lyrics. And then you come up with three other careers you think would be require good writing. So this is three jobs that are not in the lyrics, right? Or the song, right? So 2A, tell me three jobs that are in the song. 2B, tell me three jobs that are not in the song. Part 3, you have probably been taught the writing process. Of course, you've been taught by me several times. Brainstorming for ideas, writing rough copies, revising, editing, producing final copies, and other English classes. Whether you have realized it or not, the song Sit Down and Write teaches these same skills, but rather than using the form of an in-class discussion, a textbook, or an informative essay, the information is presented to you as a, as a rap or a hip-hop song. You are to write a brief summary of this song 
in at least four sentences what is it about main idea and supporting details okay so and for that I would do I would do sit down sit down and write and I would fill in this right what is the main idea and then and then you know cite specific lines and words from the lyrics okay I would do that you could you could talk you could talk about the so it, it it's organized into into paragraphs or in in music we call that verses right talk about the verses or the stanzas you know um you know what does each one talk about so that's that's really all you're doing here right so identify the main idea and then back up that main idea so I think this song is really about dot 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 and I know this because of these specific lines these words from the lyrics you can talk about the different verses stanzas and then you can also talk about you know how Here's a clue to the main idea. How somebody could use or learn from, from this song. And I think that's the key to what the song is all about, right? How can somebody explain how someone can use or learn from this song? Okay, assignment 15. Hopefully, that song has inspired you and shown you that writing is an important skill you will need at home, at school, and or end at work. And if that song has not inspired you um, to, um, to know that writing is an important skill, then of course, I am, I'm hoping that my classes can do that for you. Um, but you know, I'm hoping there's some useful information for you in that song that, that, you, that you can take away. You are to read the following paragraph and correct as many errors as you can. You are then to rewrite the paragraph, handwritten or on a computer. So this is really important, okay? So a lot of students miss that second step. So step one is, you know, you are, you are editing the following paragraph. So you, step one is you edit the paragraph. So edit, mark it up, and then step two is you rewrite the paragraph. So ideally, if you if you can edit this thing up, and and take a uh, a photograph of it, and then rewrite it, and then send me both, that would be best case scenario. So edit the paragraph, then rewrite the paragraph. So here is the paragraph. So when you're editing, I find it's very crucial, very essential part of the process is to read things out loud. So I'm going to do that now and see if we can catch any mistakes. And I won't do them all, but I'll I'll just guide you through through this process. So. When you choose a post-secondary institution to attend, there is many issues to consider. You must consider the type of program you wish to pursue and determine which schools offer the most valuable course of study for your goals. You and your family most discuss the relative costs of various programs, deciding which school hour afford affordable to you. You academic ability must be considered in terms competition and grade requirements. Your personality must be taken into consideration as well. Are you prepared to work hard and be committed to doing well in your courses? Do you prefer large classes or small? Are you prepared to move, if necessary, to a bigger community or city? Do you function best in a structured or loose setting? Uh, do you function best in a structured or loose setting? <laughs> Choosing a post-secondary institution is serious endeavor, encompassing many different elements regarding day school, your goals, your abilities, and your preferences. So hopefully just by listening to me read those words and following along with the words on the page 
you can hear where the mistakes are and go back and, 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 and fix them. So when you read your work aloud, you catch words that you missed. You catch words that you didn't spell correctly. Um, you see where you're not, where your ideas don't flow. Um, so you're going to catch the missing words. You're going to catch the words that are spelled incorrectly. And then, you know, so some of the main things you want to work on here are, are, are capitalization, right? So pay attention to capitalization. Some words are capitalized and they shouldn't be. Some words are lowercase and they should be capitalized. So pay attention to capitalization. Pay attention to spelling. Uh, pay close attention to missing words because there are several missing words. And you're going to catch those missing words by reading this stuff out loud. Um, um, and then there's, there's some punctuation issues. So I'm hoping if you go back to my previous lectures, um, you should be able to catch most of the mistakes here. So read that thing out loud and then um, edit, edit the copy, mark it up, you know, use a, use a pen or whatever and just mark up the mistakes, uh, put notes in the comments, sorry, put notes in the margins. And, and that's really what editing is, is all about, right? It's, it's that process of making notes, either on something that somebody else has written or you're, you're putting notes on uh, something that you've written. And, and I, I find that to be kind of a fascinating process, right? It's like you wrote something and then you, you let it sit for a few weeks and then you come back to it and it's like you're having a conversation with your past self, right? Like, okay, that doesn't make sense. This does. That word spelled incorrectly. And so you make a whole bunch of notes to yourself, and then a future version of yourself, which may be you know, five minutes from now, maybe 10 minutes, could be a year from now, or a few weeks from now, will take those notes and use those notes to make it even stronger. Assignment 16. In this lesson, you have looked at the writing process and what it can mean for you as a writer. Please take some time to reflect on the importance of following the writing process for you and the writing you do on a regular basis. Use the following questions information to guide your writing. Your journal entry will be at least six sentences in length. So assignment 16 is a journal entry. And in this journal entry, you are reflecting upon the writing process specifically, okay? And then you're going to use these questions to guide that process. Comment on the use of the writing process for assignments. Provide some examples and anecdotes, personal stories about your own writing at home and at school or at work, okay? So what I would do for all these, right, is, you know, is get a notebook out, get a blank piece of paper, and just simply, you know, answer that question. You know, um, you know what experience, you know, do you have? What experience do you have as a writer? You know, um, have you have you written something you are proud of? You know, is there? Is there something you want to write? You know, a story that you want to tell. Um, you know, what is what is your process as a writer? Okay, so if you answer those questions, you're going to generate a lot of a lot of content that you can use for your journal entry. Which steps of the writing process, revising, uh, except for example, seem to be more important to you personally than others? Explain why you feel this way. So, so for that one, um, we have step one, planning. Uh, step two, writing. Um, three, revising. Four, editing. 
and 5 uh, is publishing. And what I would do is I would pick I would pick one or two and write about them. You can just pick one if you want. That's totally fine, right? So um, which ones are more important to you personally than others, okay? So pick one or two and write about them. Why? And then explain why is it important to you. I would go with the editing process. I think that's the most vital part of the writing process. I think we, we produce our best work um, when we edit and we fine tune. So that, that's what I would talk about. I would talk about um, step four, the editing process. Which steps of the writing process do you feel you need to improve upon? How can your teacher help you to improve in these parts? Okay, so again, um, I would just you know focus your writing, be specific, pick one or two where where you need help, and explain why. You don't have to talk about all five. Just pick one or two and then explain, uh, you know, how or why you, you need help there. Okay, uh, assignment 17. Now that, y now that your news report is done, so the news report was, if, if we look back, so assignment 12 was the rough copy of the news report. Assignment 13 was your final copy. And so now that you've read that, now that you've read chapter 1 and you've written your news report, it is time to see what Jimmy is up to in the novel. This time, though, the only questions you are going to have to answer are ones that you write. Your task is to read the next two chapters, chapters two and three, uh, and then ask and answer questions based on the novel. Complete the question starters and then answer the questions using details, examples, and page numbers where possible from the text. So I have seen, I have seen where some students will pose questions, and that's great. They've done the first part of the, of the question, but they haven't done the second part. So you have to pose the question, but you also have to answer the question, okay? So that's really important, right? So pose the question and answer the question as well. And, th and then again, this is, this is chapters two and three. Okay, yes, yeah, so you've got to do that. Um, let's see, I want to I jump ahead to question 18 before, we, before we, we go too far here. Yeah, I think I want to I end the class just talking about some of these questions. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just going to talk about, uh, make sure I, I address question 18. Uh, question, or sorry, assignment 18 is another journal entry. And so this is the final assignment you do in the unit, and it'll be up to you to write a journal entry about the progress you've made so far, right? So, um, and then th this is a good opportunity to review the, the five steps of the writing process. So step one is you plan. So you answer the questions posed in the assignment, and then in point form, you write down as many things as possible. These will become your writing prompts to, to guide your free writing. So... So what I've done is I, I've put those questions in here. So uh, this is what I would recommend that you do. Um, get a blank piece of paper out, get a journal out, and, and, and write down these questions and then answer them. Are there skills you are becoming more comfortable with? Have you started to enjoy certain specific literacy activities that you did not like before? Okay? So, you know, I would list two to three skills you know, or just one um, you can talk about in detail, right? So I'll, I'll keep coming back to this concept of, of writing about things in detail, right? And not stretching yourself too thin. And, and what, you, what, you, what you want to avoid is just listing a whole bunch of skills and then not describing them and not explaining 
how you become more comfortable with them. So I in, in these kinds of writing assignments, it's always better to just, you know, talk about fewer things, but go into greater detail, right? So you want to avoid just s sticking to the surface, right? You want to, um, you really want to focus your writing and just bring up one or two skills and then talk about those skills at length. Have you started to enjoy certain literacy activities that you did not like before? Right? So again, same idea, right? But in this case, you really want to you really want to focus focus on the before and after. So you have the skill and then you're going to talk about before and then now, right? So, you know, write a sentence about um, a skill or a skill or activity. You know, talk about before how you approached that activity before, how you felt about it before, and then talk about how you feel about it now. Okay, um, struggles I am having. Yeah, again, so I would try to brainstorm a list of struggles or issues and then pick one or two you can give lots of details on. Um, the seven grandfather teachings, that's optional. But, you know, you may want to choose, again, choose one, choose one or two, right? And then connect them to connect them to your studies. Or you being a reader and a writer. And then, you know, so that's what I would do. And then once you've got all of those points down, like once you've got all of those kind of uh, point form notes down, what I would suggest to you to do is, is to set a timer for at least 10 minutes and then you try and write a sentence for each of the points you wrote down in step one, right? So, and so that way you're just sort of giving yourself a prompt. You're giving yourself something to write about. Remember, your sentence doesn't have to make sense. Use correct grammar, spelling, or be used in your final copy. You are generating ideas, and this is an essential part of the writing process, right? So don't expect to just sit down. Um, um, I was going to say sit down and write. But you know that that's the name of our song from today, right? So, but it's um, don't expect and to sit down and write perfection, right? Just sit down and write. Just just get ideas on the page, and sometimes it's hard to even just do that to just write. So that's why we do that step one, that planning s part, that brainstorming part. Um, so you know you so you're gonna have one or two issues. Write a sentence about each of those one or two issues, right? Um, Pick one or two grandfather teachings. Write a sentence about one. Write a sentence about each one of those teachings. Um, write about one or two skills, right? That you feel comfortable with. Uh, write about an, an activity that you did not that you did not like before, or just write about an activity that um, maybe has changed for you, or how you think about it has changed, right? Write a sentence for each one. Once you've done that, you should have a lot of raw material to go with enough raw material to move you on to the next step. I want you to read over what you have written and then answer these questions. Um, is there a general theme or a main idea that you can I can use to tie everything together? 
And here's another great question. What is the best sentence or idea that I wrote? And how can I expand upon that idea? So that's really what I, I find is one of the most enjoyable parts of the writing process is you you don't really know where it's going to go and you, you're not even sure what's going to happen and you, and you surprise yourself. And so once you have all that raw material, then you ask yourself like, okay, can I make connections between the grandfather teachings and my, my struggles? Can I make connections between um, this skill that I'm developing? Or can I make connections between this activity that I didn't enjoy doing two weeks ago, but it, I'm starting to kind of enjoy parts of it now, right? So can I make connections? Is there a main idea here? I, is there something that, um, that's really working? And then what's the best sentence or what's the best idea that I wrote? You know, what, what's, how can I expand upon that idea? How can, I, how can I take that idea to the next level, right? And that's one of the best parts, right? It's like, you know, what, what did I come up with? That's awesome. And, you know, just, and that's, that's where it's time to, like, celebrate yourself and be like, I can do this. I can come up with ideas. I can, uh, I can write. I can read. I can express myself. I can, I can be unique. I can be original, right? And sometimes we can only do that after we just let go of trying to sound right and trying to impress uh, anybody or trying to sound smart for our teacher and all these things that sort of get in the way, right? So you put those things aside and just simply sit down and write and then just, you know, see what you came up with. And then you can go into that editing process, right? And then you can start to edit and fine tune it um, ask someone else to read your work if you have someone you can trust and they can find errors that you may not see. You get really close to your own writing. Um, artists of all kinds of medium, uh, mediums, uh, I guess media is the right word, experience this. So singer-songwriters, painters, sculptors, uh, woodworkers, whatever. Y you're really close to a, a, a piece of art. You're, you're close to a piece of writing and you can't see its limitations, right? Or it means a lot to you and you don't want to see its limitations. So find someone else you can trust, ask them to read it. After writing your first draft, put it down for a while. Um, maybe go for a walk, come back to it, and then read it with fresh ears. You're going to find lots of stuff that, that you can change, okay? And then um, Reading your stuff out loud is amazing. I can't recommend that part enough. Uh, you can take this to the next level, and you can record yourself on, on a phone or, what, or whatever the case may be. Record yourself reading out your writing and then play it back to yourself. It's amazing, right? So you'll catch mistakes. You will make connections. You will come up with new ideas. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, it, it'll just sound different. Right? So hearing something read out loud is different than reading it inside your mind. Right? It's a different experience, and I guarantee you it'll help generate more ideas. Right? So and that's what this is all about. It's all about making connections and generating ideas and uh, taking raw ideas and then making them into something even better. Okay. So I feel like I've covered that in enough detail. So let's go back to um, assignment 17. So in assignment 17, you will complete the question starters, and then you answer the questions using details, examples, page numbers, where possible from the text. So here's an example. So you know, how do you think? Um, you know. Um, or if you were in Jimmy's shoes, what, you know, um, you know, you know, what, and, and then you, you, can, you can modify them too, right? So you, if you want to change that word what to who, or, you know, if you were in Jimmy's shoes, you could, so for example, I could say who, you know, if you were in Jimmy's shoes, who would you, um, who would you ask for help? And then you got to answer it in a full sentence, right? So your answer is going to be a full sentence. So you can't just say his grandmother. You got to say why in a full sentence, right? So your answer has got to be in a full sentence, and it should fully explain the question. It should fully answer the question. So write in a full sentence, 
and fully answer your own question. So making up questions and answering them is one of the most fundamental parts of, you know, being an intellectual or, or just being someone who's a thinker, right? So there's so many fields like science and, you know, science is driven by questions, right? So um, there's, there's a lot of quotes that go along the lines of, you know, science, science isn't about finding answers or philosophy is not about finding answers. It's really about posing the right questions, right? And it's, and it's like, if you can find the right question, that question is going to open up so many possibilities and expand your understanding of so many things, right? So if you can ask a question, it's going to help you understand the book, right? So if you were in Jimmy's shoes, you know, what? Um, let's try another one. So if, if you were in Jimmy's shoes, you know, what? What would you say to Gary? Because Gary is obviously, um, you know, if, if we read this novel, we can see that Gary is sort of like represents Jimmy's past, right? So um, this novel, Jimmy Comes Home, I would argue is, is a, a lot of it ab is, is about escaping your past and, and trying to reinvent yourself and trying to, trying to move beyond your past, trying to become a better person. Um, but the past is, is there. Like you can't, you can't just erase it. It's there. He did awful things. He can't just ignore them. But you know, you know, what would you say to Gary? Or, or you know, or or you know, if you were in Jimmy's shoes, you know, what would you do to to? What would you do to make your life better? Do you think that Teresa, you know, um, wants a relationship? You know. Do you think that Teresa wants to be with Jimmy? That's a great question, right? Do you think that Teresa um, believes uh, Jimmy can change? Great question, right? If I don't say so myself. <laughs> Does she believe that Jimmy can change? Does she believe that Jimmy has changed? Does she believe that it's always going to be the same old Jimmy? Um, you know, question five, you know, what? That's just open-ended. You know, what You know, what do you think? What do you think is Jimmy's, you know, biggest problem? Right? And then just simply answer it, right? So spend some time, right? Um, spend some time thinking about the question you want to pose. That's, that's really important, right? Because a, a question that you, that you just sort of just, just rifle off and don't really think about, it's not going to lead to the best answers, okay? So, so spend some time crafting your question, okay? Maybe just quickly, we will, um, the last few minutes, I'll, I'll read a bit of chapter two, okay? Back at school. Frank arrived later and talked to Jimmy's grandmother while Jimmy waited outside. Then they went to see the school principal. He was new, but that was usually the way it was in Green Star Lake. A new principal every year or two. Sometimes there was more than one in a year, and new teachers too. So when are you coming to school, the principal asked. He didn't get a chance to answer, and Frank said, Tomorrow. Uh, he'll be here tomorrow, on time for the first class, right, Jimmy? That's, remember, that's Frank, the parole officer. Jimmy nodded briefly. Will he be going back to grade nine, Frank asked. Yes, replied the principal. I looked at his records, and he's only completed grade eight so far. How are you feeling about going back to school, Jimmy? He didn't answer. He had learned not to talk when questioned by people in authority. The principal waited for an answer. When none came, the principal looked at him. You know, I realize you were in a lot of trouble when you were here last, and I'm not going to talk about that or warn you about anything, but I'd like, to talk to you. I'd like you to talk to me. Is that too much to ask? He shrugged, but he said nothing. 
The principal waited. Frank stared at him. Finally, Jimmy shrugged and said, sure. Good. Let's start from square one. What do you say? Jimmy wasn't sure what the principal was talking about. Oh, the principal would. Uh, square one. A fresh start, you know? Yeah, okay. Jimmy felt better. He had expected a lecture about the rules. Frank was waiting for Jimmy to say something other than sure. I think that's good. What do you think? That th I think that's good. What do you think? Both the principal and the probation officer were looking at him expectantly. Jimmy tried to wait them out, but he finally said, yeah, sure. I mean it. You're starting with a clean slate. He looked at the principal and said something in Cree. Frank thought he was being rude. Jimmy explained, I just said square one in Cree. It doesn't mean the same thing, though. The principal looked at him and smiled. I mean it. Jimmy said something again in the language he had, in the, in the language he had grown up with. Frank looked at him. Jimmy smirked. Clean sheets in Cree. <laughs> the principal laughed and repeated square one in Cree as well as he could after as well as he could after listening to Jimmy. Then the principal said, I don't know you I don't know you or about your past difficulties. We'll see how it goes. Square one, Jimmy laughed. Yeah, sure. The principal said to make it sound like Jimmy's yeah, sure. I think you're gonna do okay, his probation officer said nervously. So you know that that's I'll, I'll close with that. So that that's one question. You know that is asked by Jimmy. Um, so this new principal says, "How are you feeling about coming back to school?" Right. So that that's a question you could ask. Right. You know, um, you know, how does Jimmy feel about being back at school? What is he going to do? Um, what is he going to do in in this school year? You know, what is he going to go through? What is he going to achieve? Uh, what struggles will Jimmy face at school? Right. So that. That could be a question you could ask, right? You know, what what struggles will Jimmy face at school, right? So just by reading a couple of chapters or just by reading a couple of lines from the book, a few paragraphs, you should be able to generate lots of questions. Okay, so that's all the time we have for today.